Dear friends, I am Ari Ross Asur Khan, head of the Great Eurasia Project, scientist, researcher, PhD, and I am glad to welcome you to my channel. If you liked our video, please subscribe to the channel, order our books, links in the video description, repost, put likes, write comments and reviews. We are very interested to communicate with you and answer your questions that come from all over the world. And it is very pleasant that the topics that we raise are timely and touch the souls and hearts of people, our comrades in arms and like-minded people. This is Lecture 6, Foggy Albion, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, England, and the Isle of Man. Members of the Slavic Aryan lineage appeared in Albion several millennia ago. Another wave of the settlement of the isles began from the advent of our era until the 9th century. Representatives of the russo venedian Slavic Aryan genus gave rise to many famous clans, leading their rich and colorful history since the 11th-12th centuries. But let's get it right. So Irish mythology mentions certain tribes of the goddess Danu, who is ancient times sailed on their ships to the Irish shores. These tribes of uh, fair-haired and light-eyed people possessed amazing magical knowledge and were also excellent warriors and musicians, had amazing lordes, weapons, and musical instruments. There are Druids, Maguses, who built circular shaped priestly observatory complexes and brought knowledge and laws to these lands. It is no coincidence that some sources rank them among of the Celtic's god. On the other hand, in the pre Christian Slavic Aryan Vedic tradition, there are legends about several clans that left the island of the Ruthus north to the west in search of new lands. This happened in the second half of the three millennium BC. Here is what the ancient Irish epic says about the resettlement of the tribe of the goddess Danu to Ireland. On the northern islands in the earth, there were tribes of the goddess Danu, and there they comprehended wisdom, magic, knowledge of the druids, charms, and other secrets until they surpassed skillful people from all over the world. In four cities, they comprehended wisdom, secret knowledge, devilish craft, Thalias and Gorias, Burias and Findias. These four cities were located in the area of the Kola Peninsula and Malaya Zimla, it's uh, north of Russia. From Thalias, they bought magic stone Lyrefail, so that later in Tara, he would cry out under every Tsar king who was destined to rule Ireland. From Gorias, they bought the spear that Luke owned. No one could resist him to the one in this hand it was. From Findias, they bought the sword to Nuada. As soon as he was taken out of the combat scabbard, no one could evade him and he was truly irresistible. From Burias, they bought the cauldron of Dagda. People never left him hungry. The goddess Danu belongs to the Slavic pantheon. Let's look closely at the toponymy of the islands. Wales, the land of Slavic god Wales. Scotia, Scotland, the land of the Scythians, cattle breeders. In uh, Russian, cattle sounds like Scots. Ireland, the land of Iri, Ari, a rift from the Iri, the quietest. Irtish, it's a river in Siberia. Only the Irish and Scots from Western Europeans retain the ability to pronounce the complex Russian letter Shchim. The capital of Scotia is Glasgow. This is the name of Glasgow, only Russian etymology, and means observation fort. Dublin, the capital of Ireland, from the Russian tanning, laser processing, as well as from Duleps, Volinians, with the common authentic instruments, bagpipes, English pipe. Edinburgh is the city of Odin, Edin, Vodin. Previously, Scotia was called Alba, its capital from 843 to 1452 was Scone. Since 1452, 
the city of Odin Edinburgh. This district is called Spat and Kin Ross, which is translated into Russian as Kin, clan, genius of Ross, Russes, Russians. The Iberians, the same Celts, lived not only in Spain, but also in the Caucasus, Georgia, mountains, Rus, formerly called Iberia, and Ireland called Iberia or Iberia. Next to these Iberias were the Albanias. One Albania was in the Caucasus, next to Iberia, the second in the Balkans. It is there now. The Alps are located next to Spanish Iberia. Well, next to the Irish Hibernia is foggy Albion. It is probably no coincidence that all three pairs of Iberian Alps are in the mountains. The world Iberians is most likely associated with bears, and the world Alb was transformed into Elf. It is worth nothing that we would famous Rootwell Cross, which uh, miraculously survived from the 7th century, is covered with Russian Old Slavic runic inscriptions. We add that all the symbols and ornaments of the Celts, including the Celtic equilateral cross, are of ancient Slavic Old Russian origin. The construction of the 5.5-meter cross dates back to about the last quarter of the 7th century AD. The cross stood near the altar of the Rootwell Church until 1642, when the assembly of the Scottish Church decided to this relict of Roman paganism should be destroyed. The description was carried out, but not completely. The cross was dismantled and uh, one part of the fragments of the cross was buried in the cemetery and the other part was dumped into a trench in the courtyard of the church and used for paving. In this form, fragments of the cross lie until the end of the 18th century, until the remains that were in the churchyard interfered with the reconstruction of the church building that had begun. More than 20 years after that, the surviving fragments of the cross were noticed by the Reverend Henry Duncan, Minister for Church Affairs of the Dunfireshire district, who became interested in the monument of paganism and decided to traverse and even restore it. Part of the panels of the cross had already been lost by the time. Some fragments were damaged. In particular, it is assumed that the panel with the scene of the Nativity of the Christ was completely lost. The restored cross was installed in the church courtyard and in 1887, through the efforts of the Reverend James McFarlane, the cross was placed in the building of the church itself, where it is now. One of right panel of the Ruthwell cross at the top, translated from Old Slavic, Old Russes, into modern English, it is written, this is Ra Yara admirers, say believers in Ra Wolf. On the right panel of the cross, on the left side, almost verbatim, the gift of the temple of the Lord God Yar, so that they do not live in darkness. God's law is not established by him, requires them to be called to Yar, close faith in Ra, that wolf, since life is arranged differently. The central character depicted on the crosshair is the sun, that is the solar god Yar, which is said in Russian in the runic inscription. A falcon is depicted on top, and a rooster and a horse are depicted on the crossbar. On the river side of the crossbar, a fish with an open mouth and a swan are depicted. It is worth noting that in the peace treaty between the Angles and the Scots after the Battle of Back and Boar in 13 and 15, it is directly stated that the cattle breeders are direct descendants of the Scythians of the Black Sea Northern Steppes. Until the 10th century in England, lords were called exclusively Alanus. Let us recall letter by letter now the name of the famous work of Walter Scott, Ivan Hoe, is written in English Ivan Hoe, 
Back in the middle of the 19th century in Russia, this work was published under the name of Ivan Goy, since the inscription in Latin is read in Slavic. Howard Reed, PhD in anthropology at the University of Cambridge and ethnographer, published the book Arthur the Dragon King, How a Barbarian Nomad Became Britain's Greatest Hero in uh, 2001. He studied 75 primary sources and came to the conclusion that the legends about King Arthur, Queen Ginerva, the wizard Merlin, the Knights of the Round Table, date back to the history of the Rus who lived in the steppes of the northern Black Sea region. Reed drew attention to the object with images of the dragon stored in the St. Petersburg Hermitage. These items were found in the graves of the nomadic warriors in Siberia and date back to the 500 BC. Dragons similar to those of the Sumerians are noted in an illustrated Irish manuscript written around 800. By the way, the British cavalry is still called dragons. Reed claims that the first detachment of tall, blonde horsemen protected by metal armor and the banners with the image of dragons appeared in the Roman army in Britain in 175. Then about 5,500 Sumatian mercenaries arrived on the island. It was they and their descendants who gave the basis of the legend of Arthur. It was dragons that were depicted on the standards of the warlike Scythian Sumatians and Alans as a tribal symbol. The figure shows as image of a cross from the tomb of King Arthur. The inscription of it is of great interest. You can consider is written in Latin, here rests, and so on. At the same time, we can assume that the inscription begins with the Greek word Nikia, that is Nikia or Nika, which means in Greek winner. It is extremely curious to see how the name of King Arthur is represented in the inscription. We see that it is written like this, Rex Arturius that is king of the horde rus or king of the russian horde note that artu and rus are separated from each other written is to separate words later apparently starting from the 18th century the name of the king began to the written is a new way arturius combining two words together horda and rus and thus subscured the razor clear Russian for the origin of this name title. The inscription of the stone from England, the overture Sharon stone, is read as in Slavonic as approximate translation. He is better than the wolf, eternal conversation about the power of the wolf. I pray him. Earlier, when we lived a long time with the wolf, mother gave the Lord God. A gate ring from the British Museum, Linstock Castle. The inscription represents a typical set of walls and phrase for funerary decoration. Approximate translation of the divided fragments of the text. Mara, going to, be here, to God, wolf, going to, take, yes, wolf to his Mara, duck. Welcome to Wolf Darkness, to the Wolf. On a gold shilling from Isle, England, it is written in Slavonic, the law lives forever. Compare the name of the coin, shilling, with the Russian name of the coin of the Middle Age, shelag, shelag. And also a lot of runic inscription on coins, runic monuments of the 5th-8th centuries, for example, on Kondalb's Rose, Lancaster, England, on bone products from excavation in London, on shears, knives, rings, plates, exactly. Let's zoom up a little. As follows from the inscription of the Rootwell Cross from Scotland, Britain before the Roman conquest, as well as Scandinavia, was called Rus, nothing Rus. This gives the right to call the, all the ancient runic inscription of Scandinavia and Britain Russians.
virtually all British runic inscriptions that are widely known and currently available to internet users are reasonably readable in Slavic languages. Based on the totally on the red runic text, it became clear that in the pre-Christian period in the British Isles, only Russian runic writing in the pre-Christian culture of worship, the solar god Wolf, Ravel, can be traced quite well. From the 7th to 8th century AD, faith in Ravel is transformed into the worship of the solar god Yar. Rayar, who would later be identified with Christ. It was during this period that the runic writing of Britain was replaced by writing based on the Latin alphabet, and the culture of ancient truth was completely replaced by Christianity. According to DNA genealogy, is modern Great Britain the share of representatives of the Proto-Slavic Aryan genus? of the R1A1 Catholic groups in the language of which all the most ancient written monuments of Britain could be written is minimal, often from 0 to 4 percent, and only in the north of Scotland reach a quarter of the population. What exactly other peoples of Britain remains to be seen? It becomes extremely clear why the Russes, Rosas, Venets, who had Russes runic writing and spoke the Slavic language, from some reason are not mentioned in the history of Britain either separately or as part of the so-called barbarian kingdoms. The available information is quiet enough to bury the Anglo-Saxon ancient literature of the Germanic edition forever. The language of runic inscription is in all of Northern Europe is here clearly Slavonic. The famous French researcher Jean Robin, in his writing points to the fact that the Vents, the same Scythians, Roses, in the 4th 12th centuries were Tsar's kings of navigation, Roi de Navigation, in the North Sea and the English Channel, in French La Manche. Jean Robin writes, these white Venets are also the founders of Roslyn Castle in northern Scotland, and from them the Scots derive their Scythian, Slavic Aryan region. Near Roslyn Castle, the Russian Scythians built a church which differs from all buildings in that region, with an amazing architecture and interior decoration with unique and beautiful cavings. In 1446, uh, Count William Sinclair of Orkney rebuilt the old church and made a family tomb in it. It is believed that this church was built by Sinclair. Also, it is indicated that it was just a reconstruction of an older religious building. St. Matthew Church is known for being one of the plots of the film based on the Dan Brown's novel The Da Vinci Code. In Dan Brown's novel The Da Vinci Code and the film based on it, Roslyn Chapel supposedly located on the Paris Meridian, which is not true, he is represented by the place where the priory of Sign hid the Holy Grail the relics of Mary Magdalene. All pseudo-scientific reasoning and discoveries of Dan Brown are nothing more than fantasies with a lot of errors and outright lies. As already mentioned, at the very beginning of the lecture, the representatives of the russo Venets, Slavic Aryans, gave rise to many famous clans, leading their rich and vibrant history from the 11th-12th centuries. The clan Rose is a Scottish Highland clan. One of the branch of the clan is a noble family of Earls Mormers Rose. The clan owned and operated the land of the same name in the county of Ross Shear, county of Ross, in the highlands in the North Scotland. To the southwest, this land border to the county of Perton Kit Ross, where the city of King Ross, the city of Ross family, is located, as well as the ancient capital of Scone, Scotland, in the county of Gowri. At 32 kilometers from Skåne, there is the magical city of Odin Edinburgh. 
It is known that around the 4th century there was a center of power in Skåne. Coronation of monarch in Skåne took place according to Vedic pagan rites on a hill next to the ritual stone until the 14th centuries. Near the hill there is Skåne Abbey, which also served as one of the residences of the Tsars of Scotia. It is important to know that since the 9th century, there has been a community of hermit monks called Kuldi in Skåne, as throughout Scotia and Ireland. The etymology of the word Kuldi is not known to the modern pseudoscience. But the self-named Kuldi tell us that they were Russus Arians, Magicus Veduns, professing Vedism Orthodoxy, essentially similar to early Christianity, Byzantine, Alexandrian, like St. Patrick's. It is known that they didn't succumb to the influence of the Roman Catholic Church, nor did they take monastic vows. The Rus Ros, Slavic Arians, brought to Albion not only knowledge and language, but also love for music and songs. It is worth mentioning the legendary big pipes and the harp, which is the prototype of the Russian psaltery. Clan MacLeod is one of the clan of the Highland of Scotland, territorially associated with the Isle of Skye. The clan taste is origin from all of the black, died in 12 and uh, 37. The Tsar of Islands from the Northern Slavic Aryan, Northern Russian Scandinavian Krovan dynasty, who ruled on the Isle of Man and part of the Hebrides, son of Gottfried Olofsson, Tsar of the Isles and Dublin, and Fingula, granddaughter of the Supreme Tsar of Ireland, Moerher Tar Mark Lochlein. All of the black of the Crovan dynasty was a direct descendant of the Norris first canoe, Harald the Beauty Hired, 815-933. Harald the Beautiful Hired himself, according to the research of the Dinia genealogy, is one of the sons of the Oleg the Prophet, Oleg from Novgorod, who ruled the Kievan Rus. The Krovans, like the Venets, the Russo Varyags, were considered Tsars of navigation and dominated the Isle of Man and the surrounding territories from the 9th to 10th centuries. They built a Russian abbey in the castle of Russia on the island in the 11th century. It was the abbey that the Chronicle of Man, the most important written source of the history of the island, were written between 12 and 61 and uh, 12 and 62. It is believed that the name of the clan comes from the eponym Loud, who was the son of all of the Black and Christina, daughter of Earl Ross. However, there is another version according to which the name of the clan came from Maglod. It's a Hungarian name of the town in central Hungary. In the times of migrations across Eurasia, the Slavic Aryans moved from the Urals mountains to Hungary and further to the northwest. They transferred to the distant lands of the Isle of Man, one of the emblems, Tamgas three skeleton, three running legs from one point. This is one of the first solar symbols close in this respect to the swastika, symbolizing the running of time and the cyclical course of history. Here we should also note that this solar symbol is much older and was known to the Etruscans back in the first millennium BC. The Mackenzie clan is another of the kindred clans territory living the, in the Ross Shear lands of the Highlands of Scotland. It is believed that the Mackenzie were descendants of the Loarn, second half of the 5th and early 6th century, a semi legendary Tsar of the Dial Riyadh, and early medieval Scottish kingdom that covered the west coast of Scotland the present territory of Agrel and Butte and the Southern Highland, including the Quarter Hebrid and Northern Ireland, present territory of County Antrim. Next door in the north of Ireland in the county of Roscommon with the administrative center of Roscommon. On the border between counties Roscommon and Litrium are Ruski and Ross Inver. 
nearly 30 kilometers from Dublin, is the ancient capital of Ireland, Tara, the place of initiation of high Tsars, high kings. Tara, the hill of Tsars, is a sacred place for the Irish of the Stone Age and the political and religious center of pre-Christian Ireland, Iberia, Ibaria, both in Sagas. In the annals and in the hagiographies of Irish saints, everywhere there are references to Tara as a symbol of the legitimacy of power, as a fortress that cannot be taken because it no longer exists. This mystical city has been hidden from centuries in the depths of the very real hills of County Meath and was inaccessible to any conquerors. That may be why Ireland was able to endure 12 centuries of slavery and oppression, the Russian historian Afanasy wrote about Taran. Perhaps every Irishman, in one way or another, feels a connection with Tara as a living link with the past, not a vague, ghostly past in a cloudy haze of legend and sagas, but the past, which is relevant and sought after regardless of the historical context, which in fact has no historical localization, but there is an amazing and inexplicable sense of belonging to the great and deep breath of ancient Asia. Note that Tara is also the name of the North Star and the goddess of the land of the Slavic Aryans, and the ancient city of the river Ari, Iri, Irtish of quietest in Siberia, and the desert in Hindustan. It is a historical fact that one of the last Ruriks was slain in the battle near Tara in 12th century by one of the Plantagenet family, the kings of England. Over the past 400 years, some significant events have occurred of the Earth that initially gave impetus to the process of globalization. It is about creating global superstate structures of a religious and military political economic nature. One of the first TNC international corporations in the world was the British East India Company. Till 1907, the English East India Company, also in, was founded back in the 16 and 0 and called the Governor and Company of the Merchants of London trading with the East Indies, but the international corporation can rightly be considered from the late 17th till the early 18th centuries. The ruthless British colonialism of India was accompanied by more than the hundred years of ruinous politics, the great calamity period, which led to the agriculture and traditional crafts degradation, which eventually contributed to the deaths of up to 40 million Indians. According to the research of the famous American historian Brooke Adams, Britain exported from India treasures from 1 billion pounds sterling in the first few decades of colonization. The bloody and unrestrained explanation of the Indian colonies became the most important source for British capital accumulation and contributed to the beginning of the first industrial revolution in England. It should be noted that along with the British company in India and other regions, other TNC have also started operating. French, Dutch, Portuguese, Spanish and Danish East India companies. At the time when the demand for the Chinese tea in Britain has increased since the 18th century, this company paid for it with supply of opium, which has grown in India in Bengal. Opium accounted for up to 40% of Indian exports by the middle of the 19th century. The Chinese enormous black market has absorbed up to 1,400 tons of opium per year. The Chinese government was forced to impose the death penalty for the opium smuggling, resulting in Britain starting military operation against China, which grew into the first opium war of 18 and 39, 18 and 42. However, the British special services controlled a significant part of the drug trade till present. 
The American invasion to Afghanistan has started because the Taliban launched a war of drugs, destroyed all the crops of poppy and opium on their territory, and ten times reduced their drug turnover through their territory. The loss of $30 billion from the drug turnover was inadmissible from the British, and they provoked their agents of influence in the U.S. for invasion. Her Majesty's Most Honorary Privy Council in the British Advisor's Body. Its prototype was created in the 13th century and then was called the Royal Council. It consisted of the closest advisor of the king, the councillor, treasurer, judge, and close ministers. The executive and judicial power, which they carried out on behalf of the king, was concentrated in their hands. The Royal Council was totally formed in England during the absolute monarchy period. The Royal Council members were appointed by the king, reported to him, did not depend on the parliament. The Privy Council has occurred the international scale from the early 18th century due to the England's colonial policy. Nowadays, Karl is a king of Great Britain, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Antigua and Barbuda, the Bahamas, Barbados, Belize, Grenada, Papua New Guinea, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, Solomon Islands, Tuvalu and Jamaica. Some of these states also have a private councils that are subject to the British private council. For several centuries, all the main threats of the world power control have gone to the royal family of Great Britain. The King Karl leads the state of the Jewish Testament in Europe. The world breed Ania is translated from Hebrew as uh, the land of the covenant. The British king's crown has 12 stones, which means 12 tribes of Israel. The king's scepter is Egyptian. Its color are red, white, and blue. It's a color of masonry. So a region's prerogative is to declare war without legislative restriction and without explaining the reasons, conclude peace, direct military actions, dismiss the government, dissolve parliament, formalize state policy. No person in the world has greater concentration of power. The conductor, script writer, and planner who gives orders to world leaders is located in London. In fact, the king controls all branches of power, legislative, executive, and judicial. As well, the monarch is the supreme ruler of the Anglican Church and can appoint bishops and archbishops that is the head of not only secular but also spiritual power, which cannot be found anywhere in the world, not even in Iran. It was the king, into the highest instance, who made the decision to send troops to Iraq. As a result, the British Petroleum is successfully pumping the Middle East oil. And now British Petroleum is successfully receiving huge dividends from aggressive Russia. Only the lower house of commons is elective in Britain. The upper house of peers has the power of overturn decision of the lower and it's partly hereditary. The representatives of this novel elite almost completely lead their race from the representatives of such honored professions as robbers, racketeers, pirates, smugglers, druggers, weapons, and slave traders. Only instead of ostrich shoes, they have magnificent boas of arms and personal liveries. By the way, Sir Henry Morgan received the title of peer and the post of Jamaica governor for piracy, as well as Sir Francis Drake and many others. Such a little known fact that King Carl controls the so-called the Island Club, which include 4,000 oligarchs from all countries of the Commonwealth, should also be taken into account. This is the financial and economic feast of the British monarchy, the knock of which can open or knock out many doors in the world.
In addition, 117 corporations whose headquarters are in the city of London are among the 500 largest corporations in the world. The members of the Chamber of Peers are the owners and heads of the almost of this corporation, including the infamous Rand Corporation. The well-known American economist and politician Lyndon LaRouche and many other researchers directly said that the executive office of president is overflowed with the British agents of influence and their activities are aimed at destroying the U.S., the U.S., according to him, is rapidly turning into a fascist state in full accordance with the British fascist doctrines, which actually originated in the foggy Albion. The British ruled not only by force of arms, but also actively bribed and corrupted locally military and political elites, major traders and intellectuals, forming dissidents out of it. In Great Britain colonies appeared a comprador term, a person representing the interests of foreign capital in his country. It was a comprador bourgeoisie that was most active in opposing the liberation and socialist movements in the colonies, never supporting them and always acting as a fifth column. Fidel Castro, Hugo Chavez, Saddam Hussein, Muammar Gaddafi, Ali Khamenei, Muhammad Ahmadinejad, and Alexander Lukashenko are united by one factor. Nationalization of natural resources was carried out in each of these countries. In the context of Belarus, privatization was not carried out, which does not allow the empires to steal their resources with impunity. It can be definitely said that the undemocratic and the distorted mires of Western propaganda really means patriotic, acting in personal country interests. It turns out that the current Irish, Scots, and Welsh, despite many years of attempts by the Anglo-Saxons to dilute their genetics, remain blood brothers for the Russes, Russians. This explains why the non-human Vatican Jewish pseudo-elite, which is an essential part of the world elite, has tried to destroy both the Russes, Russians, and the Irish, Scots, and Welsh, also Russes, peoples in all ages. After all, they retain the genetics information of their distant ancestors. Dear friends, please subscribe to the channel, order our book, links in the video description, repost our videos, put likes, write comments and reviews, and it is very pleasant that the topics that we raise are timely and touch the souls and heads of people, our comrades in arms and like-minded people. See you soon, friends.